Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here and today in this video we're going to be taking a look at if you are overpaying for your hockey skates and how to recognise this and of course what you need to do to make sure that you avoid it. Now this isn't something that falls down to you guys yourselves, this is something that we're guilty of and also the manufacturers that make the equipment, they're definitely also guilty of this too and that's only focusing on top spec equipment in regards to what we see represented in the NHL and of course what we see represented on their social media platforms. We all know now more than ever how influential things like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook are and when the manufacturers that create the equipment that we use are only ever showing us and bombarding us with images of their products but it's only the flagship or the top spec products that can create a little bit of uh, an unbalance in regards to who's buying what and why people are motivated to buy what they buy and that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. Now, of course, as always, before we jump into this video, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe. It helps the channel out, it helps us to grow. And of course, before we jump into the video, if you like what we produce, give the video a thumbs up. But let's just jump into it. And as a quick side note, before we get into the video, comment down below and let me know which skates you're using. Did you go for the flagship or the top spec? And if you did, why is that? Also, maybe mention the skate you're using and the level of hockey and how often you play hockey per week. I think that would be a really good balance to see who's buying what and why, and maybe even to find out if some of you could have saved a hell of a lot of money by maybe dropping down a few models of skates. But all of that is what we're going to be touching on in this video. So let's jump in. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using the Jet Speed range of skates from CCM to break this video down. The flagship or the top spec skate from that skate range or skate family is going to be the FT4 Pro. It's a range of skates or a family of skates that's been out for quite some time. It is still fairly new, but it's one that I felt everyone knows, everyone recognizes, and it's still new enough but not old enough so this video wouldn't be valid in a few months time if you see where I'm going. If you want me to break it down exactly like I do in this video looking through the whole skate range with some of the other skate families and manufacturers that are out there please comment down below and let me know which one we should do next but bear in mind the time of year it's why we've excluded uh, certain families from this video because we know that it's that time of year if you get where I'm going with that comment but let me know in the comments down below but let's jump in. So when you're looking at the top spec skate, which in this case is going to be the FT4 Pro and you start to work your way down, what changes with the skate? It's going to be three main things. The first one is going to be, of course, the stiffness of the skate, which depending on which manufacturers you're looking at, CCM introduced something called a stiffness index um, in recent times, which is a number that's uh, essentially attached to a skate and represents the stiffness of that skate. This is something that also I know Bauer do have, but it's not something that they make kind of public on the websites when they're sharing their products or when you're scrolling through you know sites like puck stop or maybe hockey monkey if you're in north america it's not something that's attached to their literature on their skates but i know they do it as well so the stiffness index is something that means this is how stiff that skate is and as you move down in price the stiffness of the skates gets less stiff now from there, the next thing that's going to be changing when you drop down in price is going to be the features that are on the skates. I'm going to say this is a typical thing that does happen, but you'll see with the particular family of skates that we're discussing in this video, that's not always the case, but that's typically what happens. The stiffness of the skate goes down as you drop down in price, and you also get less features. From there, it's also going to be the materials that are actually used to construct the skate. You might find that they are not as premium when you start to drop down in price, which is of course expected. If you pay less for a pair of skates, you can't expect it to have all of the same premium materials that are going to be featured on the flagship or the top specs pair of skates. So if you were to look at me, for example, I'm roughly 74 to 78 kilograms, depending on how much wine I've been drinking in any given month. Um, and I'm, I guess you could say, an average hockey player at best. And I'm on the ice actually playing hockey maybe once or twice a week. So when you've got those things, you've got my weight, you can obviously see my build in terms of how big I am. I'm not too big, I'm not too heavy. You can see that my ability is average at best and I'm on the ice only twice. That gives me enough information, of course, after having figured out what fit you are um, in terms of the actual length of your foot and then if you need to go into a regular, tapered or wide skate, that's a completely separate topic and I'll link a video down below if you want help on sizing yourself from home or away from an arena or a, a shop and trying to figure out which uh, size and which um, fit family uh, depending on which manufacturers you're looking at, if it's Bauer or CCM, which one you should be going into. I'll link that video down below. But once you know what size you are, the next thing from there is to figure out 
which range of skates I need to be picking up. So with the details I've got about myself, I definitely don't need to be looking as high as the FT4 Pros. Based on the information that I've given, that's something that would be a little bit overkill for what my needs realistically would be. I would be better off looking between the FT4, which is the model just below the FT4 Pro, or more realistically at the FT485. That would be probably the most ideal skate for me to pick up when we're looking at this particular range of skates from CCM. Now, if we look at pricing, the price difference between the FT4 Pro and the FT485 is almost 300 pounds. So just by literally listening to what my needs would be and then how that correlates to the different ranges of skates that are available from the JetSpeed family, I'm saving myself almost 300 pounds. Now, am I gonna get on the ice and feel the difference between the FT4 Pro and the FT485 in terms of its weight, its responsiveness, how comfortable it is, what the materials are inside the skate, how premium they are. Realistically, if I was skating barefoot and I was being really picky, because I actually review skates for a living, this is what I do, I might be able to pick up a few on the difference, a few of the differences between the skate models. But if I'm just playing a game of hockey, if I'm at a rec session, if I'm training at practice, I'm absolutely not going to feel it. The FT485, in terms of its stiffness, the FT4 Pro is ranked at 195, the FT485 is ranked at 165. Now, there is a little bit of difference in stiffness of the skates. In terms of both of these skates being one-piece boot frames from CCM, they both are, so that's definitely not an issue. Now, the features as you drop down in skate models, um, from top spec all the way down to mid-range and maybe entry level, you do see features leaving the skates because you're paying less money, which you'd think is expected. But surprisingly with the JetSpeed family and this particular family of skates that we're looking at, that's really not the case. As you drop down, one thing that was pretty shocking to see is the entire jet speed family is now one piece regardless of if you're looking at entry level or flagship top spec or mid-range they're all one piece they all feature the holder that allows you to switch out the blades a little dial they also feature ccm's brand new excess tongue so you can switch out the tongues you can go for a thinner tongue a thicker tongue a, th a tongue that has d3o material inside it or one that doesn't so i'm not really losing a bunch of features the skate is going to be softer in terms of its physical construction and of course the materials inside the liner of the skate aren't going to be as soft to the touch they're not going to be as premium as what you would see inside the ft4 pros but with the ft485s i'm still going to get a skate that will support my build on the ice in terms of my actual physical build it's the right size for me because i've already figured that out but more importantly the skate is going to be able to support my performance on the ice which we said was average at best so those are all the critical things i need from a pair of skates now what happens is if you overspend if you have the money to do that that's fine by all means you can buy whatever the hell that you want but what does tend to happen is if you don't know how to make that boot perform for you if you are an entry level player that isn't that experienced that only is going to be on the ice maybe once or twice a week that's not that built you don't need to be going for an ft4 pro skate but if you do the stiffness of that skate will actually inhibit and restrict your mobility on the ice so your tight turns your quick stops your transitions your pivots because of how stiff the structure of that skate is and the fact that you might not have the experience to be able to get that boot to bend and flex and react the way it needs to on the ice, you actually make the learning process for yourself a lot harder and you restrict your ability to grow and become a better skater on the ice. A lot of the differences that you think that you're going to be able to feel with skates, especially when you look at top spec or the flagship level of skate and you drop down one or two skate models, it's not anywhere near as apparent as a lot of you might think. Once you actually get onto the ice, you find out a lot of this stuff is in your head and it's not actually physical. So there's absolutely nothing wrong dropping down a couple of skate models, not only to save money, but to get a skate that is more aimed and more appropriate for your ability, build and skill on the ice. So buying a pair of skates that's aimed at your level, that is the right level for you, that is gonna be able to support you in terms of your build on the ice, your weight, your uh, ability, is the skate gonna be able to support your ability and what you need it to do on the ice? Those are the main things that you need to be looking out for and ensuring that you do when you buy a pair of skates. So hopefully by kind of outlining my ability, my build, and how much money I should be spending on a pair of skates, which is roughly at the high end of 300 pounds to the low end of 400 pounds. So somewhere between sort of 350 to 400 pounds is kind of spot on for what I need to be spending on a pair of skates. But that's with this particular family of skates. If you'd like to see me do this with some of the other ones that are out there, like I said, please leave your comments down below. And hopefully that's helped to kind of clear up where you should be throwing your money when you're looking at a new pair of skates based on your ability, your build, and your requirements on the ice.
Now, of course, the contrast to that is if I was the exact same ability that I said, which is average at best, um, I had the same foot dimensions, the same foot shape and size, etc. But for example, I was going to be on the ice a lot more, maybe four times a week, five times a week. That would then change where I would be spending my money because all of a sudden that FT485, although it's stiff enough to support my ability on the ice, but as my actual usage goes up, that means that my, at some point, hopefully, skill is also going to be going up. And if that's going to be the case, if I'm going from being on the ice once a week to four or five times a week, that alone would warrant me going into, for example, the FT4 skates. You would want to have a slightly stiffer skate, a slightly stiffer construction, and maybe slightly better liners in terms of more premium materials, so it lasts a little bit longer because my usage has now gone up. So although my ability is the same, the amount of time I spend on the ice has gone up, so the skates are going to get beaten up a lot quicker. A stiffer skate that has slightly more premium materials inside it would definitely benefit me in that instance. And of course, in addition to that, if it, we were looking at a completely different person that say is a complete beginner on the ice, but they're incredibly built, incredibly heavy, and they're gonna be on the ice maybe twice a week, even though they are a beginner, based on the fact that they're on the ice a couple of times a week and they have quite a big heavy build, that would always be advised going for a slightly stiffer skate. All of these different circumstances will change the result of where you should be spending your money and what level of skate is going to be appropriate for you based on your needs that you can hopefully list out after watching this video and be able to point yourself in the right direction. Now, of course, guys, this is definitely going to be the first of a new type of video that we produce. We have been seeing comments and we are listening to what you guys are suggesting in terms of not only focusing on top spec or flagship equipment. So when a brand new pair of skates comes out like the FT4 Pros, we're not just going to be looking at the FT4 Pros, we're going to be looking at the the entire range from CCM. This is going to be the exact same thing with the sticks as well. We are very, very guilty of only focusing on top spec, but the reason that we did that is at the time there was a lack of those videos online, but more importantly, it's what you guys were requesting. You wanted to see the difference between the top spec bower stick versus the top spec CCM stick, etc, etc. But as time's gone on, we've definitely seen an increase in comments about focusing on intermediate and mid-range level of, of equipment, just because of course we know that not everyone can go out there and spend seven, eight hundred pounds on a pair of skates. So we are definitely going to be looking at full ranges. We're going to be doing this with the um, Supreme family. We're going to be doing this with the Vapor family from Bauer. Of course, we've just looked at the Jetspeed family from CCM, which leaves the rib core, which in my opinion, I don't think the CCM needs the rib core range of skates anymore. Maybe if you're looking at a pair of custom 100K Pros, then that's relevant. But in terms of at a retail level, I don't really see the need for the rib core range of, of skates, especially after having tested them. That's uh, food for another video that we can uh, we can discuss. Uh, but of course, jet speed is done. Uh, we'll focus on rib core. And of course, we're also gonna be doing the tax range as well. But a big thank you for the feedback. Please keep it coming, because we do listen. Um, if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe, notification bell, turn thumbs up if you enjoyed the content and as always guys i'll see you in the next video any comments you have or suggestions or questions down below and take care till next time peace